Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mike Berg. I teach theology at Wisconsin Lutheran College and here this morning filling in for Pastor Ru, who had an emergency appendectomy. I saw him this morning. He'll be fine. But I'm preaching for him this morning. Everything's printed for you. We will begin with our opening hymn, hymn 239, verses 1 through 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us according, and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. pray. 
Lord, keep your household, the church, in continual godliness and set us free from all adversi adversities that under your protection we may serve you with true devotion and holy deeds. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. The word of the Lord. We sing Psalm 67. reading from the revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John. <clears throat> After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? 
where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Alleluia. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us confess the true Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We'll jump ahead to the hymn of the day, preach you the word, hymn 544.
the name of Jesus. You are not only free from, you are free for. Our American style of freedom is fine when it comes to politics and policy, but it usually only ends up being about freedom from, freedom from some sort of control. But the truth of the matter is, is that we are not only free from, we are free for. And if we are not free for, then we are only about what we are not, rather than who we have been made to be. St. Paul talks about freedom and slavery in his letter to the Romans, and he, he says it this way, and it's different than our normal sense of freedom. He says, you are a slave to sin. That means that, it means that you have another master. You don't really have a free will. You don't just get to do what you want. You do what your sinful nature wants you to do. And that's not freedom. It is slavery. We may think it's freedom to do what we want, when we want, how often we want, with whomever we want. But if we are only doing what our sinful nature does, it's not really freedom, it's slavery to sin. It's much like the addict who says, I can put whatever I want into my body. It's my choice. And we all know that's not really his choice. It's not really freedom. It's slavery and slavery of the worst kind. So to be free from sin, which is what God has done for you, means that you are righteous. You see, there's no middle ground. Either you are sinner or you are saint. And so when you are no longer a sinner, when you have been forgiven those sins, when you have been made righteous in Jesus Christ, now you are a saint. And a saint, St. Paul says, is just as much a slave. Now, we don't like to hear that, but think about it. If you're not sinning, then you are loving. If you are not a sinner, then you are holy. And because God has made you perfect and has made you righteous in the blood of Christ, has given you the righteousness of Christ, this is who you are now. And just like the sinner cannot help but do anything but sin, there's no choice. So the saint cannot do anything but saintly things. She has no choice. And so St. Paul says, you have a new master, a master of righteousness. We don't like that because we turn that into don't tell me what to do. But in reality, it's the most beautiful thing that God has said to us. That you're not just free from something. You are free for something, for the love of neighbor. This is who you are now. This is who you are. And how did you become this? Well, by the word of God, specifically by baptism. You see, the word of God has power. From the very beginning, the word of God has creative power. It can turn something from nothing. It can create out of nex nihilo, we can say it's out of nothing. God's word is so powerful that when he said, let there be light, there was light. Well, many of you were baptized, maybe right in this church, maybe some of you young enough, right at that font. And the word of God was spoken. And when the word of God was spoken, something happened. There was something created out of a dead heart came a heart alive in faith and it was no less miraculous and no less powerful than in Genesis 1 when God said let there be light when the pastor said I baptize you God said let there be a Christian at your baptism most likely the sign of the cross was employed to mark you as one redeemed by Christ crucified. So that God and everybody else would say, 
that one belongs to God, that one is righteous. But that cross has a dual meaning because it also means that you will bear a cross all of the days of your life. You do suffer. You do struggle. You do keep on sinning, even though your identity is one who is righteous. You are a sinner saint. But God still uses sinners. In fact, who else is he going to use? He uses them in very profound ways. He says, go spread the word, and by the way, be generous. Spread it like that, that farmer who doesn't care how much the bag of seed costs. Throw it everywhere, on the rocky soil, on the soil with weeds, on the path. Or what of that? Or what of that? Just be generous with this word of God. And trust me, that just as the rain and the snow does not return back to me without producing a prophet, so my word, its powerful, creative power, will not return to me empty-handed. But God also uses sinners, that's you and me, in our callings in our day-to-day -day life. Are you father or mother? Are you carpenter or nurse? Are you teacher or lawyer? Whatever you do, God uses you in such a profound way that he says, I am, I am going to work through you. You become my co-worker. I will put you on as if you were a mask, and I will feed the world, farmer, through you, and I will teach our children through you, teacher, and I will spare lives through you, doctor and nurse, and I will, I will put out fires through you, firefighter. I will use you. But that gift that God gives the world through you, and it is a gift, I don't care if the rest of the world doesn't understand it, and doesn't appreciate the spreadsheet that you put together, or that you collected the garbage, or that you cleaned the bathroom, these are profound acts of God through you, whether the world sees it or not. Not only is that a gift to the world through you that will not return empty-handed, and you're supposed to spread that love like the farmer. Well, what of that? Well, what of that? It is also a gift to you so that you have purpose. Not just a purpose of survival, and not just a purpose of making the ends meet, not just a purpose of someday retiring, but something profound, something great, something divine. In your everyday life, you see, you're not just free from sin. You are free for something. In our verse of the day, St. Paul calls us God's workmanship, that he has created good deeds in advance for us to accomplish. I don't know where you'll be in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Some of you will be in heaven already. But some of us may still be here. And you can plan all you want. You can have a five-year plan and a 10-year plan. People who are a little bit older in these pews will tell you, that's cute. It'll get blown up. But that's OK. Because God knows where you will be. And in fact, he has created good deeds for you in advance. You have no idea that 10 years from now, he created this good deed for you. That 10 years from now, maybe some of you will be at the deathbed of your father or your mother with the exact right words, and God knew about it before the beginning of time. And then in five years, some of you will be in a boardroom making decisions that will affect hundreds, maybe thousands of people, and he put you in charge of that decision. And maybe 20 years from now, maybe, maybe God has an advance prepared, I don't know, for you. He gives you a purpose. He gives you a freedom not just from, but a freedom for. Can you just imagine this. 
that he's just waiting for that one moment, more than one moment, hundreds, thousands, millions of moments where you're his guy, you're his gal at that moment, at that time, at that place to either preach the word, scatter the seed, or even just to show acts of love in all of your vocations, your jobs, your families, and your community. It's quite a wonder that God has set this all up, that, that when you came to the font, maybe as a baby, that what ran through his mind was all of the things that you would do with him and for him. And the only way you can, you can look into the future and know that this is going to be great and wonderful and fantastic and that it's all covered is to know that you are secure in the love of God. So secure are you in the love of God, this seed that was planted in your heart that did not return to the heavens empty-handed, but created faith out of nothing. You're so secure in that word of God that you can lose yourself in the love of neighbor and say, oh, what of that? Oh, what of that? My job is only to love and only to preach, only to do my job, and it will be okay. Because that seed of the word that was planted in our heart, that rain that came down and does not return empty-handed, will not return empty-handed because God said so. And it's only a privilege for you and me to be a part of this beautiful equation. Some of you worry quite a bit, and rightfully so, about this world and about this future and about our country and about your family and about your job and about your health, and we could go on for a while. But God's got you covered. He said so. With the same exact word that said, let there be light. With the same exact word that says, I baptize. He's got you covered. So whatever you find yourself in, carpenter or nurse, teacher or lawyer, garbage collector or maid, you are doing God's work and it is your highest honor. You see, because you're not just free from, you are free for. You are free from sin and free for the love of the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. We continue with the Create in Me. Please stand.
please stand for prayer. Holy Spirit, we praise you for pouring out spiritual understanding on Jesus' disciples at Pentecost. You came to them when they were confused and in doubt and taught them what Jesus meant when he told them that he would die and rise again. You came to them when they were timid and afraid, and you moved them to speak boldly about the great things God has done to save the world from sin. Dear Holy Spirit, we too have felt uncertain and hesitant. Give us the courageous conviction of faith to speak to others about Jesus as you enabled the disciples to do on Pentecost. Let us experience the joy of leading others to discover the way to heaven through faith in Jesus. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Empower us to seize every opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus' love and salvation. Open the hearts of people everywhere so that many thousands will enter the kingdom of believers through the gospel, which your church proclaims throughout the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Just one short announcement before we have one more piece uh, from, our, from our school children, which was wonderful, by the way. Just a reminder that during the Bible class hour, there will be an open forum, I believe, here in the sanctuary. God bless your week.